Now this is the very popular and well-known wild comfrey. Wild comfrey can be kind of difficult to find. However, if you're out in the woods in the right spot in the right time of year, you might get lucky and see it flowering. So let's talk about some of its identification features. First off, whenever the plant is in flower, usually in early to middle of spring, right now it is the first week of May, and we can see this plant is already almost completely done flowering. So you kind of want to get out here and look uh, for wild comfrey, at least in my area of central Indiana, all the way from the middle of April to the middle of May. Now this plant is already flowered and it looks like it's been pollinated because if we look, here we can actually see the little fruits or the little seed pods of wild comfrey. Now this is an incredibly easy plant to identify. One of the first things that most people are going to notice are these basal leaves, these very large basal leaves. We can see there's uh, actually a couple stalks coming out of just this one plant here, or actually two plants. So we have two plants here growing really, really close together. One of the things you're going to notice about your comfrey is these very large basal leaves. Now there are a couple different types of leaves on comfrey, and they're very, very interesting in the way that they grow. So first set was, are these basal leaves at the ground, and then as we go up the plant, you'll notice the leaves will actually get smaller and smaller as we go up the plant. If we go back to the leaves, we'll notice that the leaves from the basal leaves are going to be very large, much larger than my hand. And they are smooth margins. There's a little ripples on this one from plant damage, but the leaves are smooth margins. The top is very, very fuzzy, and so is the bottom. Here you can actually see all these hairs or little fuzz running along the leaves. Now the entire plant is incredibly hairy as we can see here on the stem. Now these leaves will alternate growing up the stem and we'll also notice that they are slightly perfoliate. So the stem goes through, actually goes through the leaves here like we can see here. Some of them will be clasping like we can see here on this one and others will be nearly completely perfoliate where they are perforated by the stem. Now, as we're going to notice as we get up the plant, the leaves are going to get slightly smaller. Now, like I said earlier, this is an incredibly easy plant to identify. And if we look at the flowers of wild comfrey, we're going to notice five petals with a somewhat ridge-like appearance going through the center of each one of the petals. Now, the flower color of your wild comfrey is going to be kind of a light indigo blue, and those ridges are going to be kind of a whitish yellow in appearance. And there's going to be multiple flowers on your wild comfrey. Just like we can see here, this one had probably 10 or 15 flowers just here at the top of it. And after these are pollinated, it will produce the fruits which contain the seeds. Now your stem of wild comfrey is going to be round and of course green and like we mentioned earlier, extremely hairy. You can see all these hairs running down the stem. If you feel it, it has a very rough sandpapery, sort of bristly texture to it. This is a very common plant medicinally. Um, it can be somewhat hard to find, so in my area of Indiana, I don't forage this plant because it is so difficult to find. Um, however, these leaves are used medicinally, um, topically only, to help ease bruises. Uh, you do not want to use this internally. Some people would also use this historically to help uh, the pain of broken bones and to help bones heal back together. This plant has a lot of other uses as well, but I'm not going to go into those because some of them are used internally and that can be rather dangerous to do. Now usually whenever you find one wild comfrey, you're most likely going to be finding a couple of more, like we can here see some younger leaves. Now right now I'm on the edge of this gravel road um, in this nature park that I'm in, and this is where I found the wild comfrey. Now wild comfrey will grow and usually moist woodlands, as we can see behind us here, this is very nice, moist, upper mesic woodland. So that's one of your best places to look for wild comfrey. If we come down here just a little bit, here we can see another wild comfrey. So that is how you guys can identify wild comfrey. It's incredibly easy to identify. I thank all of you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all in the next one.